my dear people of southern cameroons my people of uh, ambazonia fellow brave warriors of our liberation movement accept my sincere and hearty words of congratulations to all Ambazonians, to all Southern Cameroonians, wherever you may be in the world, even if in the country where you are, you are all alone. This is the moment where you stand and you congratulate yourself, you congratulate all our brethren, you congratulate our brave hearts on Ground Zero, you congratulate all those in the diaspora who are working day and night, some doing three, four jobs, just to raise money to contribute for this movement, congratulate them. Congratulate our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, the traders, the taxi drivers, the bike riders, the interurban drivers, the truck drivers, those picking sand, the one that La Pirode Mbanga used to call, my complice them. That way he referred to all the chook heads, all in the Southern Cameroons in Ambazonia, congratulations. My people, I want to congratulate particularly all the people of the various civil society organizations on ground zero, trade unions, and in fact, all these castes. You have been doing a marvelous job supporting our brave hearts who are putting their lives on the line daily to ensure that we have a free country, that we live to posterity, a free, strong, prosperous Ambazonia, Southern Cameroons, my people. Today, I'm particularly excited. Excited because this is that moment. This is that time where everything comes to a standstill and then we observe not just a moment of silence for our heroes in countless numbers who have paid the ultimate price and who continue to do so for our freedom, but we actually celebrate them. Yes, we will celebrate Ivomba, General Ivomba. He was the first who emerged on the ground there and who led everyone and brought the courage and gave the strength to others to follow. Yes, we will celebrate all of them. All of them. We will celebrate Ayeka. We will celebrate uh, the field marshal of the BLM. We will celebrate Amigo. We will celebrate Ngenyam. We will celebrate Chacha. We will celebrate, I mean, all of them. All. All, without any exception. There are names I might not be able to call, but my brothers and sisters of Ambazonia, listen, they have all been very great guys, tough guys. I see some writing to me there, don't forget Opopo. Of course I can't. I see they say, don't forget the general of army of Sokadev, the real one, the original one that fell. Of course I can't. They say, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. I'm seeing your messages. I'm seeing your messages. Keep extending the love. I will not forget any one of them. I may not call all the names because I'm talking on the spurs. I don't have a script that I'll be looking for to read the names, each and every one. If I forget a name, please just mention it. In spirit, we are celebrating them. They are brave hearts. Listen, not all of them were saints. But not all of them were also villains. They all did a marvelous job. A great, great, great job. Ah, yes, I see. I will not forget Commando. No, I will not. No. Okay, someone is also talking about... Um, I'm not seeing the name clearly. But of course, I'll continue looking. Please keep sending the names. As I'm going on and I see, I will call them. Because, yes, we have to celebrate 
all our brave hearts. I want to, on this particular day, salute my people, the bravery of all those on the ground today who are shattering all the odds and continuing to fight towards the synergy of all our brave hearts on Ground Zero, of all our self-defense volunteers. This day is your day. Continue to work very hard. Yes, we will be able to overcome. My people of Amazonia, I know that even as we are today, celebrating while still fighting, because some say this is strange, that this is embarrassing, that some people will celebrate independence on October 1, and the next day they say we are fighting for our independence. My people, let me tell you, it's like a paradox, but that is what life is all about. Because on Christmas Day, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. During Easter, we mourn the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's, that's on Good Friday. And then the three days after, we are celebrating again the fact that our Lord has risen from the dead. So therefore, we celebrate on October 1, even while we are still fighting, because we want to call the bluff of La République du Cameroon and France and the, all their allies. We want to call the bluff of all of those who continue to think that we will not be a nation. And at the same time, we want to remind all those who believe in this freedom, in this independence, but who are frail sometimes, but who at, at times feel that, are we sure this thing will happen? Will it really happen? Oh no, I doubt. No, we celebrate this day to reassure them, to reassure those kind of people, to continue to pull them along with us so that all know that this freedom is non-negotiable. And it will come to pass. So my people of Amazonia, happy Independence Day. You know, before I take a quick break, take a look at this. Listen, these are the glory moments of the Southern Cameroons. This 1961, about that year when magic happened. So you see, Mr. John Gu Foncha was Prime Minister at the time, reviewing the Southern Cameroon's police. It was a core of honor. Oh yes, my uncle had the, I mean, the unique privilege of serving in this core. And even eventually, when he was moved to serve in the police corps of the Federal Republic of Cameroon, he served with just so much honor and glad that these days, when he looks at what people are doing in that country in the name of police, he says, this is not how we used to do it in the days of the Southern Cameroons. Yes, there was a golden age of the Southern Cameroons. And we will never, ever cease to talk about that golden age. Even as we celebrate, and I want to thank Comrade um, Dinger for this beautiful picture you are seeing behind me. I mean, he is an indefatigable fighter for our freedom. I continue to celebrate him every day. Every day. I mean, he spends all his time painting, designing, and imagining how this moment will be marked. So, Comrade Dinger, I know you are somewhere in the United States of America. Thank you so much for all you do. So, therefore, my people, let us start from the start, begin from the beginning. And so, share this with me. Sweet moment.
Ambazonia on the move. <laughs> if you are just joining, my name is Comrade John Akuro, and today is the vigil of October 1. Because I know that on Ground Zero is already October 1, but here in the United States where I am, we still have a few hours to go. So we do the vigil together to mark this very important Independence Day. I want to extend regards to all our prisoners of war, those who are undergoing daily torture for our sake. Comrade Sisiko Julius Ayuktabe, I want to extend special regards to you. Comrade Tassan Wilfred, special regards to you. Comrade Mfongalamfo, um, special regards to you. Comrade Eyambe, Elias, special regards to you. In fact, everybody in there, they are in their thousands. So I can't recall each and every name. But at least I was just trying to extend special regards, therefore, to all our comrades, prisoners of war. Remember, we are one with you. My people, if you are in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and uh, you are watching me, make sure that you join the event that is taking place there this October 1 to mark Independence Day. I understand Comrade Cho Ayeba of the AGOFC will be in London to personally, uh, I mean, should I say, participate in that event and to personally conduct it. So therefore, go out there all year and be part of this great moment, this great moment of communion and this great moment of sharing. Wherever in the world, there is an event that I'm not aware of. Please don't stay behind. Go out there and join. Because our people on Ground Zero in the Southern Cameroons will be braving all the odds to go out there and celebrate. When I say braving the odds, you see and understand why. So if you are just joining, share the link of this video. Share and share and share as much as you can. Recall, I've pointed out here more than enough that La Republic du Cameroon is continuing to spend billions of CFA on high-tech companies to try and impede the smooth operation of these channels, of especially this platform. And so therefore, if you subscribed and you had clicked on the personalization button and you're not receiving alerts and you've just been able to join here because someone shared the link with you, go back to where you click on subscribe, look at the bell that is there, click on that bell and you see there where it shows personalize, you Click on it and confirm. And of course, it will indicate to you that henceforth you will receive alerts. So we continue doing that because what the high tech companies do is they simply deactivate that personalization setting to keep you off so you are not aware when I'm having or when I'm running a live show. So, my people, today I am on September 30 in the United States of America, but on ground zero and in, in a in, in, in several parts of the world, it's already October 1. So I'm joining each and every one of you in spirit to celebrate this great day. And now, therefore, I talked of Comrade Dinga, of course, the picture you see behind me, take a look at it here better. So these are the colors that we are seeing across the world. With Ambazonians from the great state, or the great county of Fako, through Meme, Manu, Momo, Menchum, Mezam, Ngokotunja, Bui, Donga Mantung, Ndian are coming out. All across the 13 counties, people are coming out to celebrate, and this is the mood. Again, I want to thank Comrade Dinga for this beautiful picture. So, my people, why I say we should come out there in our numbers, wherever we are, to motivate and also to show our people on ground zero that we're in one spirit is because the circumstances under which they will be celebrating are not easy ones. As we speak, La République du Cameroon's colonial administrators all over Ambazonia are issuing ban to public gatherings. In effect, this has been the milder approach to it. What they have done is they have simply called for a curfew because 
or a lockdown because they are afraid to see our people out there in huge numbers celebrating and telling the world where they stand. But of course, our people know exactly what to do. And they are out there already, as I understand, in little groups preparing to converge in the places they have agreed to converge to. And in the course of the day, therefore, we shall begin receiving the pictures, the videos, the images of the fanfare that is characteristic of this day usually in Ambazonia. A day will come where the colonial administration will be completely out of our territory and the explosion will generally be really total. And of course, while you are celebrating, always put our brave hearts in your mind because they have continued to demonstrate their bravery, their determination to weed out the root of the evil in our land, which is La Republique du Cameroon. And that's why you see the horizon says, Ambas claim more military casualties in Bafut, a wing. Of course, the only other part of uh, the headline that was not added would have been that on the eve of independence. That this savory moment, uh, gifts that our brave hearts decided to hand over to the people to take into this wonderful day of celebration. Listen, my people. The fanfare is real. Listen, my people. The determination is real. Listen, my people. The focus of our great heart, of our brave heart on Ground Zero is real. They are not yielding to any form of distraction at all. They are not. And so, therefore, while we as Ambazonians are celebrating, I know our detractors will say, oh, it's your Independence Day. Which international partners or which international countries have sent you messages of congratulations as they will do to Pobia on 20th May? What does 20th May represent? I don't know. Because they should be celebrating January 1, but they don't. But of course, we have this great friend of Ambazonia, Ambassador Tibonagi. You see, at 5.30 p.m., U.S. time, that's, uh, yeah, I should call it Eastern time, U.S.A., he sent out this tweet. And of course, it was just a few minutes away from midnight, that is October 1 in Ambalan, that he sent out this tweet to join us in celebration, to tell the naysayers, to remind them that, listen, we may mourn in the night, but joy will come in the morning. When he says, someday, October 1, may be joyously celebrated throughout Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia, as July 4 is in the United States of America. Listen, do you know what July 4 is to the United States of America? Independence Day. That is the day that the people of the United States of America, the most powerful country in the world broke free from colonial domination from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The UK and the US today are not enemies. They are the closest allies. They are closest allies. But the people of the United States of America kicked out British colonial domination in their land. This is to say to La Republic du Cameroon that although we are sending you out of our territory, we want you to recognize that we are neighbors. So therefore, go out with grace because you will need our friendship tomorrow. So, Mr. Tibor Nagy says, but that requires unity of the leaders to reflect the will of the people. Now, did you hear that? Listen, my people. Diplomats always choose their words very carefully. Diplomats don't write just for the sake of writing. They choose their words. And you see, he is coming here to reaffirm his belief in that sacrosanct fact that Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia is a reality, will be 
a reality, will be a country, whether the world likes it or not. That's why he says, someday, October 1, may be joyously celebrated throughout southern Cameroon's Ambazonia, as July 4 is in the United States of America. But he says, but that requires unity of the leaders to reflect the will of the people. Otherwise, what could be done in months will take years or decades. Now, permit me maintain this uh, post on the screen here. He says clearly, now he doesn't just say unity of people, he says specifically unity of the leaders to reflect the will of the people. Now, Honorable Tibonagi, on the eve or at, on the Independence Day of the people of Ambazonia, reminds the leadership of our liberation movement that the will of the people of Ambazonia is to see their leadership work together. Because, he goes on, this working together will make it possible for our liberation, our freedom, to be achieved within months. But if we postpone this coming together, if the leaders continue to excel in greed, in avarice, in power grab, to push group philosophy, then what could be done in months will be done in several years or in decades at a very high cost. But one thing is certain from what he's saying. The certainty is that, like it or not, Ambazonia will be a country. Recall, Ambassador Cohen, another American, pointed out once that Ambazonians or Southern Cameroonians will end up getting exactly what they want. I recall there was a time that people were so frustrated with Mr. Tibor Nagy when he said in Congress that, well, pushing, that the, pushing for independence of Ambazonia at that moment seemed unrealistic. But because times change and people's perceptions of things change, events on the ground, and the actions, thoughts, and utterances of La Republic du Cameroon ended up convincing him and so many other international actors that the only solution to the ongoing conflict between La Republic du Cameroon and the people of Ambazonia will be a two-state solution. Don't forget that way back in 2016, when this movement or this phase of our movement was just brewing, Mr. Mo Ibrahim, Mo Ibrahim of the Mo Ibrahim Foundation, said on CNN that the situation in the Cameroons, that's between the Republic of Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons, will only be resolved with a two state solution, meaning the people of Ambazonia in their country and the people of La Republic du Cameroon in their country. This is why, therefore, my people, you must continue to believe in this movement. You must continue to believe in our collective resolve to attain our independence. Look, my people, I want to take a very short break before I say what I want to say, because I was not only saddened not only enraged, not also just embarrassed, but my people. Let me borrow a word from British sports commentators. I was discombobulated when I saw what my eyes saw today. I'll be right back. Oh, 
If you are just joining, you are on to the GMA Connections, my people, and today mm -hmm. is our Independence Day celebration, celebration of the independence mm -hmm. of the Southern Cameroons, aka Ambazonia, aka Ambazonia. My people, although we are celebrating today, it is also an opportunity for us to call out certain actions that are absolutely anti-struggle. While I was preparing to begin this live broadcast, mm -hmm. one of our activists sent to me a video, a link of Comrade Capo Daniel, in which he was showing, vaguely, the pictures, I mean the pictures, of almost 200 of our brave hearts on Ground Zero. He said that this were picked up from some forum of, you know, soldiers or security forces of La République du Cameroon, because according to him, they infiltrated the forum of the Ground Zero Command Forces and took these pictures being their WhatsApp profile pictures. And so he was showing these pictures and saying these are pictures that they have, they, the military, have at the level of all these fighters and that he is calling on the Ground Zero Command people actually coming across as if he's advising. But my people, I want to say this and I want to say it very unequivocally. I know sometimes when I call, when I call someone out, people say, oh, why are you doing that? You could have called them and spoken to them behind the scenes. They don't do these things behind the scenes. They do them publicly. Listen, my brothers and sisters of Ambazonia, that is a coy way, coy way of unmasking the real identities of our brave hearts and making it easy for La Republic du Cameroon to now target the families of these people in blackmail. Now, when Capo says that these pictures came to him from a forum of La Republic du Cameroon forces, it begs for too many questions. But of course, the brave hearts on Ground Zero that I contacted as soon as I got that video told me that Mr. Capo Daniel got one of their, 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 their uh, self-defense volunteer to get into the forum of the Ground Zero Command and picked out all the pictures of all those who are within and sent to him. And now he takes them and takes them onto YouTube. The video is on YouTube. And the purpose of all this is to do what? To scare all those brave hearts who are within the Ground Zero Command to scatter them and claim that they have been infiltrated. It is the same thing that we hear some in our midst. Come on, because they want to castigate an event not organized by them. Castigate a gathering not organized by them that they are opposing. They say Bamqui is going to be present there. They say the sponsor of that event is Satanga Ponji. This is the same thing that Capo is doing. Why? Because they don't want to hear about unity and synergy among our Ground Zero brave hearts, which helps protect them, make them more efficient. This, to me, I call it the highway to self-destruction. Why will we hate ourselves to the point of carrying out such callous acts? You want to burn a whole forest to catch a squirrel? What a waste. You want to summon the assistance of a mountain to crack a walnut? What a waste. What a disgrace. What an embarrassment. This is shameful. I'm calling this out because I have dropped an audio with his leadership the, that they should ask him to step down that video because this is absolute wickedness. These are people 
young men and young women who are giving their lives so that generations upon generations of Southern Cameroonians, of Ambazonians will have freedom. Yet we stay out in the diaspora because of power play. We are ready to auction all of them and their family members. This is beyond wickedness. I mean, beyond wickedness. And I know that too often, ignorance is at the origin of all this. Because the key motive is scatter the group, set them back apart, so that each of the diaspora groups will say, this group are my boys, loyal to me. They will not work together. They will not pay loyalty to the flag. They will pay loyalty to groups and deify leaders. Exactly what we are running away from. But behind this objective, he doesn't see that in trying to attain this objective, he is exposing these brave hearts, exposing their families to harm, exposing their generations to harm. This is what I call absolute wickedness. In the early days of the Ambazonia Self-Defense Council, because of disagreement between the leader of the Tigers of Ambazonia and uh, Mr. John Egyawan. Mr. John Egyawan also published a list of the real names, identities, and telephone numbers of those who belong to the Tigers of Ambazonia. We all know what happened. A good lot of them lost their lives because they were not aware. Because guerrilla fighters live in the community like you and I. Guerrilla fighters live among the people and operate from within the communities. And so when you do what you do, when you send out these pictures and you actually open picture after picture, displaying them, I said, this is not supposed to be the best gift. You give to people who are putting their lives on the line every day on Independence Day. This is not the kind of gift that you present to them. I'm calling on the leadership of Egg of Sea to do the needful and as fast as possible because this is outrageous. I mean outrageous. We can't keep doing this to ourselves. We can't. We can't keep doing this. At the time when Mr. John Egyawan did what he did, all of us, all of us, topmost among whom Comrade Ayaba, whose attachment I know is very strong towards the protection of these brave hearts on the ground, condemned the action of Mr. Johnny Giawan. Today, that is being done by somebody within his ranks. I'm calling on him and all the leadership of Egosi to ask Capo Daniel to immediately step down that video. This is beyond bad. Nothing justifies such an action. Even if you suspect that the people of La Republique du Cameroon could have this, you call on the people to take these positions. You call on the people to take steps to protect themselves. You call on the people to become more vigilant. But because you know that this one is a trump card, when I put it like this, it will scatter that ground zero uh, def uh, defense command, that ground zero command, and it will scatter them and they will all run back to, you know, the various little units where they were. Come on. The time now is for us to get ready, to prepare, to face the huge challenge that is right ahead of us. I said in my last broadcast that La Republic du Cameroon is caught in between and betwixt. Although they think that they're in a better posture today than they were yesterday because they've been promoting fragmentation, division, and everything among us, they see what is happening on the ground, still know so clearly that things are not as they think. And so, that things are absolutely not the way they think. And so, therefore, they are playing this huge mind game. And when you do this, I'm tempted to want to say that you are playing their game. Although I know strongly within me that the motive is not that, it's different from that. But by trying to attain this selfish motive, you destroy a good lot of people along the line. We have to be consequential. We have to know that certain things that we do really 
have consequences. It is high time we begin to use our brains thoroughly and avoid using just our hearts to prosecute this movement. When I talk about mind games, my people, I want us to see. I want us to share this video again. We have all watched it. But let's share it again now with a more critical eye. And after that, I will contrast it with another video of a citizen of La Republique du Cameroon. You'll be embarrassed about the stark contrast. But the second message is a strong warning to the people involved in the first. Because this fight that we are fighting is the fight to liberate even our culture from total destruction and desecration by La Republique du Cameroon. Just take a watch at this public disgrace. And woe unto any person or group of persons who will regard this green thing as a joke. We are going to shame our ancestors behind you and you know the consequences. The enemies of the Northwest are hereby called upon to respond positively to any fondom where they are when the cleansing is going on. This cleansing is going to start at the regional level where we will lay curses on those who take up guns and manage everything violent against the state of Cameroon. Now, did you hear that? Funds, traditional rulers, who incarnate our culture, who represent our ancestors, whose role is to bless the land, today are cursing the land. This is travesty of what we call justice. These funds, or these so-called funds, want to sit and curse their sons for rising up to chase an enemy from the land. In the grass field of old, the young brave ones who stood up against an invading enemy ended up with red feathers, with traditional titles, ended up with tools to mark their bravery. Today, our brainwashed so-called forms, who are now only an image of themselves, have been transformed into an instrument in the hands of the, op of the oppressor, to the point where they now say all they have to do is curse their children who have risen in the communities to fight and protect the land against an invading colonial administration. These funds have not said they are cursing these talks sent by Mr. Paul Bia who have burned down over 400 village settlements in Ambazonia. No, they are not cursing them. They are not saying that they will curse the invading talks who killed, burnt, pregnant women and children, 23 of them in Gabu, that the entire world rose in unison to condemn. In their land, these funds are not cursing those people. These funds are not cursing the one speaking there. Von Bambi of Agam in Menchum is not cursing Mr. Bia's talks who went and opened fire on women, innocent women, rampantly in Menchum. He's not cursing them. No, he definitely will be blessing them. Not cursing, because among them may be the phone of Andek. Not cursing those talks 
who went and cut short the lives of innocent women in Andek to the point where the colonial mayor, Ubango Heli, had to come out and call them out. The phone of Balinyunga is sitting there. Will not be cursing Mr. Bias talks for doing what they did on women and young girls and children in Balinyunga a few days back. No, they will not be doing that. They will not be cursing those people who cut short the life of Bebe Carol Louise, who cut short the life of Bebe Tato Brandy, or who cut short the life of the proprietor of Mawa Hotel in Bamenda. No, they will not be doing that. They will not be cursing Chief John Wute for going to Nigeria to bring Bayelsa boys into Ndian to come and be fighting his own sons and daughters. They will not be cursing him. They will be cursing their brave sons and daughters who have risen to protect the land, who have risen to fight for the future of their own children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and generations of their families to come. My people, listen to them again. And we call on the elite, particularly, not to respond in a no, no challenge, but to take it seriously. And the fathers will pronounce the curses from the ancestors to whoever, whoever opposes or takes it as a joke. Now, the question I'm asking here is, which ancestors would they be pronouncing these curses to? The ancestors of the people of Ambazonia who are protecting the land, who are giving cover, who have made nonsense of Mr. Pobia's so-called mighty army. The ancestors of Ambaland who have ridiculed Yaounde's King Pharaoh. The ancestors of Ambaland who continue to strengthen our brave hearts, a racked up on train force by the day, to ridicule the almighty or dreaded B, which ancestors would they be evoking to pronounce these curses? And by the way, they are refugees in Yaoundé. So where are they going to be pouring this palm wine or slaughtering these goats that they are going to be asking for? On shrines in Yaoundé? Or they'll send the bees to dig out the shrines to them in Yaoundé where they are as refugees. These are people. Who have not been to their villages since 2017. Yes, they haven't been there. You come and stand and you are perorating. It's a shame. When you look at the eyes of Von Bambi, I'm even so ashamed that I generally used to consider him a friend. Ashamed that I have to share, I mean, a common neighborhood with this kind of a person. Ashamed that I had ever looked at him and actually addressed him as your majesty. When he even speaks, look at his eyes. He himself is ashamed so call of himself. The, He's ashamed the, the, of what he Look at his eyes. Our members of the House of Chiefs who have a communication on one of the major projects. The people of the North is what we have decided. Just listen to the ridiculous list that will be called. You understand that these royal beggars are all broke, hungry. They have not had the goodies that our wonderful people always, always I mean, always filled them with, flooded them with, without knowing that they were this bad. And for that reason, they have to go on a scheme to extort from so-called elite. Just hear the list. Thank you, Honorable Secretary. <coughs> Distinguished Honorable Members of the House of the Members of the Regional House, Your Excellency, the Governor of the Northwest Region, 
and the highly venerated president of the House of Chief. I extend my regards to all of you. They have, we, we sat in a college manner yesterday and came up with some items. That I just want to point out a little aspect again of this mad psycho fancy. Listen, you hear somebody stand on the public microphone and address an appointed official, governor, as His Excellency. What a shame. What an embarrassment. And that is the cause that is actually today loitering even within the ranks of our movement. We are based in the United States of America, those who are based in Europe, based in all of those great countries. Can anybody tell me the last time you heard anybody say His Excellency President Donald Trump, His Excellency President Joe Biden, His Excellency President Barack Obama, his Excellency President Bill Clinton, or His Excellency Emmanuel Macron, or His Excellency the Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain and not, or of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Listen, my people, this is all bullshit. And just so you know, in La Republic du Cameroon, of course, because I have an understanding of how things operate there, even ministers are not excellencies. The only person has a title of His Excellency in that country, is a President of the Republic, who has a mandate of those who are appointed. And besides him, only the Minister of External Relations is also called His Excellency. Why? Because, of, because he is plen a plenipotentiary. He is a plenipotentiary of the diplomatic corps. Plenipotentiary means he has a power of representation. And his signature can commit or can engage the responsibility of the country. That's why ambassadors are called excellencies because they are plenipotentiaries, because they have the power of representation and their signatures on treaties, whatever kind of treaties they are, will engage the responsibility of the country. Shy of that, every other one is by their name. But when you find people sit down and start calling a governor, an appointed governor, his excellency, you hear the call, even a divisional officer, His Excellency. Listen, that is the kind of degradation we want out of our land. And that is the kind of thing that appears to be loitering in our movement that we must reject with all vehemence. That are needed for this case. So, we estimated the unit price, the items, but we were not certain because of fluctuations of prices in the market. So I will read the items which are required for this case. Meanwhile, we will be looking for a setting and a setting for a particular unit price of the item. After that, we will officially submit the list to this venerated house. So I will enumerate the items that are required. General items needed for the cleansy as per the traditions of the grass of the grass field. Items number one, we need goods. Items number two, we need fowls. Item number three, we need palm oil. Item number four, we need palm wine. Item number five, we need salt. Item number six, we need hot alakata pepper. <laughs> Item number seven, we need honey, specifically from Oku. <laughs> Item number eight, we need cast oil. You all know cast oil. Item number nine, we need manyanga oil. And then we need transport and motivation for traditional owners that will be involved in this activity. So these are the items that we need for this cleansing. Amen. My people, you heard the most important item, transport and motivation for traditional rulers. Listen, transport and motivation for traditional rulers. Transport to go to where? From where to where? Because they are all on exile. They are refugees in La République du Cameroon. And I wonder how they are going to transport themselves to those villages. Because... Even the colonial governors don't move anymore. They are now aware 
that those things they were moving into called armor, whatever, are mobile coffins. They only move by helicopter. So how would these ones go? So they need transport to do what? To charter helicopters? And then, just look at the point of ridicule. They need goats. They need fowls. They need palm oil. They need palm wine. They need alakata pepper. They need honey from oku. These are all items that are always in abundance in our palaces. Do they need some elite to come from somewhere to come and provide them with salt to perform a ritual? Salt. Do they need goats from the goats are always given because the sons and daughters of the grass field know their tradition and will always make sure that the palaces have everything they need. When you see people come and sit and start calling all of this kind of ridiculous thing, ask them the budget at the end of the day. They will tell you they need 500 million for this. What a shame. What a disgrace. What an embarrassment. Just listen and again. Honorable members, we should not take it for a joke. I think that if this case is being done, it's going to help us rekindle peace in this our beloved region. So we should not... Uh, I'm very convinced that after the case is being done, we are going to enjoy lasting peace in this region. I actually call this shame of shames. These traditional rulers are talking about placing a curse on people in order to bring lasting peace. I wonder if they have not been able to use those curses to bring the president of their chambers. I mean the president of that gathering that they were having. Of the Northwest, the so-called Northwest House of Chiefs. This is their president, Chief Shometang. Getting to one year, nobody knows where he is. So the power of those incantations is only about cursing. Not about being able to locate where their president is. What a joke. What a disgrace. And they want us to think that they are serious. And they want anybody to be frightened by that trashy talk. Anyway, La Republic du Cameroon has demonstrated that it is banana. Therefore, monkeys must consider them as food. That's exactly what it is. If you make yourself banana, monkeys will see food in you. And they will eat you. Because La Republic du Cameroon has reached a desperate level. The degree of desperation is unimaginable. That is why, therefore, they find themselves at these doorsteps. That's why the forms of the chiefs will sit down and make a ridicule of them. And you say, so called elite, cheer, they clap. So those rituals, those incantations will bring lasting peace. They knew they could do this. Why did they wait six years? What a disgrace. What a shame. <laughs> my people and while they say that there is this very interesting reminder that comes to them brutally from la republic du cameroon before we get there let's dance again a little <laughs> Help dancing. Oh, yes, it's Independence Day. <laughs> oh, I'm even sweating with the dance. This is interesting. So, my people, let's go now to the message from Yaoundé to these buffoons who call themselves from. Just listen. Et moi, euh, je suis choqué par le degré d'inhumanisme des Camerounais. Je suis choqué par cette mémoire terriblement courte. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, lorsque M. Meka joue par exemple les pédants sur le plateau en disant de manière ironique que This gentleman says he is shocked by the level of inhumanity of some people. The level of disgust 
that some people in that country, be them elite, be them politicians, show towards the cause of humanity. Because that is exactly what it is. That von Bambi wouldn't recall that Paul Bias Toxka shot the lives of innocent women in Menchum. That he should curse. He doesn't recall. Les peines qui ont été données relèvent de la magnanimité du président de la République. Il me semble que la clémence, oui, c'est la clémence, la magnanimité. Vous l'avez même comparé à un prélat. Vous avez dit qu'il est un prélat, donc il est plus que Monseigneur Bakot. Mais ce que j'aimerais vous faire comprendre aussi, Monsieur Mouka, c'est que, au delà des luttes politiques, telles que vous les définissez dans le royaume démocratique du Cameroun, je vous assure, la dictature n'a pas d'amis. Listen to what this gentleman says. This uh, Aristide Mono is responding here to a rector who has the audacity to say that prison terms being dished out on people simply because they are seeking their freedom, because they want to express themselves against a bad system, because they want to express themselves against even colonial domination. That those prison terms are mild because of Mr. Paul Bia's magnanimity, because of Mr. Paul Bia's good heart, that Mr. Paul Bia even operates as a priest, as a prelate, and he refers to Cameroon as a democratic kingdom. Do you understand what that means? A democratic kingdom. <laughs> Democracy in a kingdom. A democratic kingdom. That's simply indicating that that place is a horrible one. Because he says that those who are supporting that system, those who are supporting the oppressive regime, those who are supporting the colonial administration in Amazonia should know that dictatorship knows no limits. When the time comes, they descend even on you. Even this one, Bambi opening his fangs, the time will come for him. Qu'à un moment donné, au-delà des intérêts, des petits calculs de positionnement, il faut que nous sachions que nous sommes d'abord des humains. Nous sommes d'abord des Camerounais. Nous sommes des frères. Ça signifie que lorsqu'un juge décide de prononcer une décision visant à détruire la vie d'un jeune, d'un de ses fils, il doit comprendre qu'il a les fils à la maison. Il doit... To what he says, that when you go out there promoting, encouraging, fostering, or even suggesting and supporting some kinds of decisions meant to destroy the lives of young people, meant to destroy other people's children. Recall always that you also have children in your house. Yes, you also have children in your house. Reminding von Bambi and all those clowns who sat there with him. The way you're talking about pronouncing curses on people's children, recall that you also have children in the house. That beyond the simple, stupid political calculations of positioning, when you think that, oh, let me do this, curse this person, insult this person, destroy this person, so that I'll be promoted. No, that we are first and foremost all humans. And this is a very strong message, not only to this misguided so-called forms, but as well to those who call themselves CPDM elite and to those in our midst who are muddying the waters of our movements by refusing to understand that at this point in time, what we need to move the pin forward is synergy. Hanging on to selfish thoughts, hanging on to greed, hanging on to political calculations rather than fostering the general good. On comprend également que le système peut chuter. Le président Biya n'est pas éternel. Il va partir, il va, nous, il va nous laisser avec une longue liste de règlements de compte. Il faut que... This is a very important part. He's reminded this from Bambi and all the others. That this poor Biya on a whose all species, you are making all of these lousy and useless pronouncements, is not eternal. Yes, he will pass. He will go. He may fall. But we will stay behind therefore. And what you are doing is enriching the list for settlement of scores. Because just imagine that something happens to the BR system today and it crashes. Will Von Bambi and all these jokers sitting around him, will they have the courage to step out anywhere there? No. All they'll be looking for is the forest to keep going. Yes. Because of these stupid and lousy acts 
for selfish pecuniary reasons. They know as well as I do that what they are doing is wrong. Yet, because of stupid calculations, oh, now that Fon Shomitang has vamoosed, if I speak this way strong, I may become the next president of the Northwest House of Chiefs. The senior opposition. That is all. That's what motivates those kind of lousy outings. Listen on. Il faut que nous fassions à Il faut que nous fassions extrêmement attention. Monsieur Marafa Amidou Yaya était plus pédant que vous. Monsieur Edouard Titus était plus pédant que vous. Monsieur Atangala Mobar était plus pédant que vous. Mais les voilà en train de transpirer dans, les, dans un petit périmètre de, quatre, de 1 mètre fois 4. Donc faisons extrêmement attention. Ceux qui ont dit. You see this? He's reminding people like Fon Bambi. People like John Gute. I mean, John Gute. What's going on about Bayelsa boys in Tundian? Reminding all of them, all these jokers, that, listen, yesterday, Titus Ezra was almighty, all powerful. He literally held the power of life and death over others in that country, but he ended up in jail. Paul Desire Engo, same thing, is there in jail. Atangana Mebara, Almighty Secretary General, who, they even called him already president, in jail. Oh yes, Marafa Amidu Yaya, in jail. All of them. The list is long. Long. Is it John who thinks he'll be spared? Or Fon Bambi? Huh? Or Atanga Ponji? All of them. None of them. Let's listen to his conclusion. Définir la politique comme une arène de gladiateurs où on peut utiliser tous les instruments, où on peut tuer, où on peut assassiner, où on peut détruire les vies. Il faut que cela sache qu'au-delà de la politique, il y a une vie. Nous sommes d'abord des humains. Avant de prononcer ou d'applaudir certaines décisions, il faut qu'on se pose toujours la question de savoir si c'était à moi qu'on faisait cela, est-ce que j'allais être fier C'est la maxime de ça. Avant de faire quelque so therefore, in conclusion, he reminds us of the golden rule. Do unto others what you like them to do unto you. So therefore, my people, on this Independence Day 2022, I'm urging all of us to continue to remain strong. Because I assure you, La Republic du Cameroon today is in a far weaker position than they were yesterday. La Republic du Cameroon today is far more vulnerable than they were yesterday. Don't always forget this. I said, by the time you see France going to the extreme level of appointing a military general, a four-star general, as ambassador to Yaoundé, and getting him get to post as fast as possible should be telling enough to each and every one of us. Because this should tell you what the whole thing is. The emergence of Boko Haram in far north Cameroon is not by chance. They have done everything is not going down because Boko Haram is a militia in waiting for the northerners to do what they want to do at the time Paul Bear closes his eyes and the Betty start thinking that they will put another Betty there to continue the reign. That is why you notice it never goes. One minute you say, oh, Boko Haram has been reduced to the barest expression. The next minute you see again that Boko Haram has just shot up again so violently. Yes, it is a militia in waiting. La République du Cameroon continues to tremble and sweat because of all this. And because they know the tawdry moments, the difficult moments ahead. That is why they are doing everything they can to see that they fragment us as much as possible to the point where when the woman tells us this is their independence, we say, no, we must kill ourselves first until I'm the only one who enjoys this independence before I take it. So, my people, let us be wise. Recall what I said the last time. Stop financing individual groups. Ask all the groups, movements, and, and organizations to come together and create a unique treasure and be sponsored through there. The argument that you get some bring to you again, some people come together and say, Oh, if they come together and they are united, the Republic of Cameroon buy everybody. Why didn't they buy everybody under Skakuf? Why didn't they buy everybody under the governing council? Why didn't they buy the entire consortium 
Because the consortium that built everything was not one group. People always forget that. The consortium is not a group. The consortium is a conglomerate of civil society organizations and trade unions. Yet, with that bogus number of, you know, organizations and trade unions put together, operating from ground zero, then La Republic of Cameroon could not buy. It's only if we come together abroad for greater synergy in order to give La Republic of Cameroon the nose bleeding it deserves that La Republic of Cameroon easily buy. Come on, give me a break. Take note, my people. We must continue to overcome both the internal and external obstacles to attaining this objective of general synergy to get to where we have to get to. Yes, we can do it. And we must do everything we can to get there. Once more, happy Independence Day to all Ambazonians. Happy Independence Day to Southern Cameroonians. Happy Independence Day wherever you are. Happy Independence Day to all those who have gone before us. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Molan Joe Litumbe. I'm thinking of... Uh, uh, Barrister Ben Muna, who said, let them bloody fight. Fight for your freedom. I'm thinking of uh, Native Justice Ebongalame. He shot all of them. That barrage of our ancestors who have gone before, of our people who are now ancestors, who have gone before, well, who were with us right here and believing in this movement. Listen, we will get there. And that freedom is a reality. Nothing shall stop it. Oh, yes. Nothing shall stop it. Independence we will get. Freedom we will attain. To God be all the glory. Let the celebrations continue.